decision affirms what millions of Americans already believe in their hearts. When all Americans are treated as equal, we are all more free. President Obama earlier today, following that Supreme Court ruling, the vote five to four, an opinion making gay marriage legal in all 50 states. Many 2016 presidential candidates took to Twitter to speak out on this court ruling. Most Republican candidates reacted against it, saying this decision should have been left up to the states. So how will this ruling affect the 2016 presidential race? For more, let's turn to our political panel. From Newsmax, New York, we welcome Ellis Hennigan, noted radio and TV commentator, and Skyping in from Los Angeles, Newsmax contributor and political analyst Larry Elder. Gentlemen, former Governor Mike Huckabee calls this ruling, quote, an act of unconstitutional judicial tyranny. You agree with that assessment, Larry? I do. I think that uh, what they've done is the same thing that they did with the case of Roe v. Wade, and that has imposed something on all 50 states that some states don't like. I don't believe that there's a 14th Amendment, an equal protection argument that same-sex marriages uh, are compelled uh, on all 50 states. And this argument was being won by the proponents of same-sex marriage on the ground. Uh, what, 34, 36, 37 states or so allow same-sex marriage, and the ones that don't, many of those allow civil union. So they were already winning this battle, and now it's been shoved down the throats of all 50 states. I think it's wrong. Ellis, uh, a lot of people are celebrating today, not all of them Republican candidates, but in a, in a weird way now the question has been settled, does this become a smaller issue, if you will, in the 2016 campaign? Maybe there's less to fight about. I mean, there's still a, a few dead enders uh, still out there squawking and trying to find some uh, hidden angle and a way to fight it. But I think the vast majority of Americans, if you believe the polling, particularly anybody under the age of uh, 40 or 45 or 50, uh, it seems largely to feel that, hey, this is inevitable. These people are, have every right to the, to the full benefits of American society. You know, we heard the same arguments in in Brown versus Board of Education, and Roe v. Wade, any time a, a decision from the Supreme Court goes against someone, they, they, they yelp about it. But uh, I think Americans are pretty much willing to accept this, at least in most corners of our country. Well, there's a legal and a moral question here. There's also the political question that we're concentrating on right now. So let me turn to Larry Elder. What does this mean for the Republican candidates? Will we see continued discussion of this issue, or does it fall by the wayside? I think it's going to be an issue during the uh, the primary season, the caucus season, especially for people like Santorum and, and Mike Huckabee, uh, who are staunch social conservatives. I think it's going to give them an argument, especially in primary states like South Carolina. But in the general election, I agree with Ellis. Most Americans support same-sex marriage. I voted for it twice in California. My fellow Californians voted against me. I was okay with that because I felt it should be done at the state level. But this is an issue that is moving rapidly in the favor of progressives. And I think a Republican candidate who comes out strongly against same sex marriage and the general might very well be in trouble. Uh, there is uh, another factor in this equation and that is the, uh, the different rulings within one day from Chief Justice John Roberts. Of right. course he was an appointee of President George W. Bush. Right. He disappointed conservatives yesterday with the Obamacare ruling. I was uh, visiting with Donald Trump and he made it clear that Jeb Bush was a big supporter of John Roberts, does this create, in fact, there's a tweet we can show you from uh, Donald Trump that he sent out today, and it's what he told me when I sat down with him. Uh, is Trump going to be able to make hay against uh, Jeb Bush, courtesy of John Roberts, Ellis? No, I mean, he'll certainly try. I mean, the notion of uh, Donald Trump as a serious legal analyst it takes a little getting used to, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, well, well, why not? I mean, he's got, a, got an opinion about everything, and I'm sure he will say it loudly. Well, well but, but well, again, to the point, Larry, the, the, the political angle on this, uh, people can caricature Donald if they want to, but it's, it could be effective on the campaign trail, could it not? Well, it's an interesting argument to make because I tweeted that um, uh, the appointment of John Roberts was the biggest mistake that George W. Bush ever made. Not the Iraq war, but the appointment of John Roberts. Uh, and I got quite a reaction. But I don't know how you hold Jeb Bush responsible for his brother's appointee, A and B. Who knew John Roberts were gonna, was going to do this? People feel betrayed. Once they get up there, they can do any darn thing they want. You have no control over them. All you can do is hope that they're going to be conservatives. Uh, and it turns out that John Roberts, at least on the issue yesterday on Obamacare, twice now, has saved it in, in ways, in my opinion, that are nothing more than activism. 
Well, it's a very curious situation, and it wasn't only George W. Bush or his dad. You think about uh, Mr. Justice Souter, who was appointed right. from New Hampshire. You go back, Ronald Reagan appointed Anthony Kennedy, and of course, yeah. Kennedy was the swing vote on today's issue. Every major decision on gay rights since uh, 1996 has come from the pen of Arthur Kennedy. Ellis, we'll broaden it out and make it bipartisan. Uh, should presidents uh, of both parties and both political persuasions be prepared for their Supreme Court appointees to surprise them? Well, of course, history teaches us that a uh, hundred times over. And, and you know, you, you can't be surprised by the public reaction. But let's be honest about it. We want those justices to do what we want for policy grounds. And, and you know, Larry has a different version of that than I do. But all of us cheer their brilliant legal scholarship when they agree with us, and then we denounce them viciously when their legal scholarship leads them in a different direction. I mean, this is all, you know, it's a fairly cynical political exercise. Let's be honest about it. Well, uh, we should also point out that when she was a federal judge before being uh, nominated, then confirmed for the Supreme Court, Sonia Sotomayor at Duke Law School said, hey, can we just let's just let's just admit and concede the fact that we and this is a paraphrase, we make these decisions using the law for our own political ends. And that troubles some of us. But Ellis, understandably, you may have a different take on it. Our apologies uh, as we lost. Uh, Larry Elder, during the course of the interview, will try to repair that connection in days to come. But we thank Ellis and Larry for their time. And you may want to comment on what they had to say during this discussion. You can do so via email, Facebook, Twitter, and NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. There's more ahead, so stay tuned.